I should also tell you how Brigham Young rewarded Orrin Porter Rockwell for his faithfulness and loyalty. You familiar with the point of the mountain here in Utah? The hotel? Hotel? <laughs> it was the best little whore house in Utah. <laughs> Yep, it was the first brothel here in the valley. <laughs> Travis Wingizzo. So, the Mormons at one time had an extermination order out on them. Uh, Mormon extermination order. When was it repealed? Uh, June 25th, 1976, uh, Governor Bond, James Bond, Kit Bond, issued an executive order rescinding the extermination order. So, yeah, October 27th, 1838. And... Unless you study church history on your own, not from what the church writ writes for you to read, you'll never know the truth of what happened. Because there's too much contradictory information, too much missing information, and way too many lies. As uh, uh, over conference, I did another bombshell research video for you. In which I found Heber C. Kimball's claimed, claimed <coughs> Freemasonry law prior to 1830, 1826 technically. And uh, in so discovering it, learned that Heber C. Kimball did in fact lie about everything under the topic of Masonry. That he wasn't even a member. There are no records of him being a member, nor advancing to Master Mason, especially in the year that he claimed he did. And so, what's up? What's going on? Well, uh, in 1837, the uh, Kirtland Safety Society is collapsing. What I had found out from research is that the Danites had abused the Kirtland Safety Society. They were taking out loans far greater than they were paying back, that they could pay back. And so they were living the lavish lifestyle off of Joseph Smith's Kirtland Safety Society. Uh, even Heber C. Kimball has the quote of apostates are uh, um, living beyond their means <clears throat> but uh, I, that's the reason for the collapse and so Joseph Smith had a whole bunch of lawsuits from the collapse of that that bank the bank itself wasn't a fraud but uh, the sabotage resulted in lawsuits against Joseph Smith because he was the one who started it as a leader in the church. So you can see how the Danites were purposely causing the problems of getting Joseph in trouble. And uh, what you then had was Joseph Smith not getting locked up for them. And so plan the next plan needed to be implemented and so I had found in the Joseph Smith papers that Brigham Young had gone to Joseph Smith apparently asking him for a blessing and Joseph Smith gave him a blessing and says I bless you that you are to return to your family and take care of them while the Danites coup the church and have me falsely locked up. Uh, it doesn't say that part, but that's what happened. <clears throat> and so Brigham Young 
had his excuse, his alibi for the whole incident of which he, in the coup of the church, was elevated to the president of the Twelve. And as I found from the church, or I was actually a cook. Oh, poor Heber. <laughs> the burden of having to run the church while Joseph was in Liberty Jail with Brigham Young. Yeah, I'll bleep you. <clears throat> Neo Danite. And so I. Uh, What you have is uh, Adam on Diamond, which I've already exposed, which is why I'm here, because I exposed it. I crossed the line. <laughs> I found out the truth. Adam on Diamond is the Danite headquarters. Section 116 did not happen. It's right there blatantly obvious in the Joseph Smith papers they've got the original documents the original paper which they used it was faded with the original writing that they had a big X on it they had crossed it out and then for leading up into section 116 all of a sudden brand new fresh ink yeah no <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So yeah, it's obvious somebody had gone back and told the story of all that had happened. And so in 1838 there was an election in Davies County, which Adam on Diamond is part of Davies County. And they had to go to another town to vote. That's where the polling places were. And there was a Missourian running for office. I think it was just a local office. It wasn't anything big. But the Danites didn't want him to win. So the Danites had their candidate run against him. And so what happened was using Adam on Diamond as the headquarters, all the Danites from the other locations all came to Adam on Diamond and then marched on the polling location and sought to overturn the election. Any of this sounding familiar? If you need help, I refer you to Danite descendants, Senator Mike Lee and Representative Chris Stewart. Because it's Chris Stewart's ancestor who had been given the first blow, knocking him to the ground which then started the Mormon War. <clears throat> As someone yelled from the Danite audience, we Danites are not going to take this or something like that. We're the Danites. He, he's the one who credited for who this secret combination was within Joseph's organization. And if you're not familiar with the secret organization and whether Joseph Smith knew it or not, I refer you to section 117 where Joseph Smith calls out Newell K. Whitney as a member of the Danites but uses Nicolation Band because the church didn't decode that word. They sort of missed some in the 1981 edition of the Doctrine and Covenants. And uh, <clears throat> uh, with the Mormon War uh, Brigham and Heber had ordered, well, with the war that got started, uh, the Danites then took their group to the judge's home and to the sheriff's home, forced them to write an affidavit saying that it was Joseph Smith who told them to do it. In my research, I had found that Joseph Smith was too far away in, in Kirtland. Was it Kirtland or far west? Far West, sorry. Uh, far West Missouri was too far away for Joseph Smith to get there in time. And if you're saying, well, you know, he could have made it in the evening time. No. Because there's in the Joseph Smith papers, him on that day handing over 
a uh, purchase sale of property to the Release Society to Emma Smith. And, uh, and so, no, he was busy that day. So, yeah, the judge and the sheriff were forced to say it was Joseph Smith who was responsible. So the Danites framed Joseph Smith. <coughs> and, oh, yeah, uh, Benjamin F. Johnson uh, is the one who said that a hooligan came to me with a rifle or a pistol and he was going to shoot me if I didn't denounce Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon as true. And so all of us Mormons get taught this, and, and yeah, I'm going to stand firm for the church. Well, he was in Adam on Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Danite who was threatening him to leave Joseph Smith's and join their organization. He did. <laughs> but he now tells the story as if he was faithful to Joseph Smith. No. Uh -uh not faithful at all and uh, and so yeah more about the Adam on Diamond secret headquarters and uh, then you get uh, the order from the Danites to Orrin Porter Rockwell to assassinate Governor William Boggs um, uh, Lilburn Williams Boggs I think is the name or is it Williams Lilburn Boggs? Regardless, doesn't matter. <coughs> and uh, and so he failed to assassinate Governor Boggs. So Governor Boggs was pissed. Extermination order. And uh, I've got the the wanted poster of him. So uh, that's fun. Five hundred dollars. Joseph Smith's uh, glass looking charge was two dollars and sixty eight cents for perspective. The supposed home by uh, Emma Hale's father, uh, after losing 116 pages, still needing to publish the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith apparently had $2,000 to buy a home from his father-in-law in Susquehanna County. <laughs> and, and that's how much it cost to publish a book back then, $2,000. And uh, he's given up the $2,000 for a home rather than saving it for the publication of the Book of Mormon. Yeah, no. No, because the place in which they designated for the sale, they put Harmony. Oops! Giveaway. It was no longer called Harmony at that time. And so they put the wrong city name. But uh, that gives you a perspective of the price range back in those days. And... Uh, and so, uh, because of this and the Mormon war that ensued and Governor Boggs issuing the extermination order, Joseph Smith got arrested, placed in Liberty Jail. And that's where we get Section 121, Section 122, which President Nelson used at the pulpit of conference to send me a death threat in 2021, October's conference. <laughs> Perils among false brethren. <laughs> oh my god oh my god yeah he was pissed that I exposed the Danite headquarters and the, the Montyoman fraud and so he let me know <laughs> and uh, and so I, yeah Joseph Smith is gone and so the coup of the church took place. The Danites were chasing Mormons out of the church. Uh, Oliver Cowdery had already left. He was upset because Sidney Rigdon and Joseph Smith were taking the church in a particular direction that Oliver Cowdery didn't like. And so, he, you know, he took his ball and went home. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, David Whitmer, who was uh, the brother-in-law, because uh, Oliver Cowdery had married a Whitmer girl. <clears throat> and so the witnesses thing, that's keeping it in the family. Except for Martin Harris. He's the only one, only outsider. And, uh, 
David Whitman was directly threatened by the Danites to leave the church or they would murder him and his family. And uh, 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 Sidney Rigdon apparently was unaware of what was going on in the big picture, like Joseph knew, because in 1838, before all this hit the fan and after the Kirtland Safety Society failure, uh, Joseph does the 1838 history. Hey, history. It's actually prophecy after the learning of the Jews. Not history. Because he's trying to teach Mormons that he is not Christian. Jesus is not his Christ. Because Brigham, with the Twelve, along with Heber, uh, were going around converting people to the Church of Jesus Christ. They're telling people that the Book of Mormon was Christian and he talks about Jesus, another testament of Jesus Christ. So Joseph Smith had to clarify this and came out hard with the version. And notice Brigham Young did not put it in his scriptures, did not take it. It was Richards again, who had been the mission president out in England, who put it in the pamphlet that uh, was then put in the Pearl of Great Price um, after Brigham Young died during John Taylor's period. And uh, that's how we have it. So Brigham Young wanted nothing to do with that 1838 crap. He's anti Jewish, anti Semitic. And uh, that's what they were doing, is they were purposely going to replace Joseph Smith's church with a Christian church. And so, yeah, they needed to act fast after Joseph Smith put that out. And, uh, and, and so uh, they chased out the leaders. Uh, the 12 president, Thomas B. Marsh, yeah, we're told it had to do with the wife, you know, cheating on milk skimmings no because it didn't go up to joseph smith joseph smith was in liberty jail he had nothing to do with the trial and uh so we've been lied to as a church and you get hinckley and monson perpetuating the lies at the pulpit of conference and uh it was the danites he realized what was going on wanted nothing to do with the church and he left and so Brigham Young took it upon himself to have authority to excommunicate within his forum and others elsewhere too but uh, he sent uh, Thomas B. Marsh a letter saying you need to come back for your your trial your excommunication trial on the 17th of March 1839 and Joseph is still in Liberty Jail and uh, he just ignored the letter and refused to go and so Brigham Young officially excommunicated him on that day <clears throat> and they then uh, when they chased out Thomas B. Marsh uh, Brigham Young followed Joseph Smith's pattern for succession or orders for succession or commandments for succession in section 107 in which each quorum are to vote for their president so the deacons quorum of six boys all six boys are supposed to have a vote as to which one of them is to be the president that's how joseph smith had set it up and so Brigham Young had no problems with that. He had chased out the ones who wouldn't vote for him. And those remaining were voting for him. And uh, uh, when Joseph Smith got out, he then put back in his brother, William. He got excommunicated along with that hassle. And uh, Brigham Young made sure to take care of him for good after Joseph was assassinated. But... Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Brigham then took it upon himself to be the leader of the church and and cause an exodus of the Mormons. We've already had the exodus, Travis. We don't need a second coming exodus or a latter day exodus, technically, by the man like Moses, because Brigham's the man like Moses. That's actually one of his titles, the Mormon Moses. 
with uh, the Pioneer Trek instead, where he sex trafficked women. And uh, uh, there's a, a constable was here today. I don't know what he was doing here, but uh, one of the other guys said, Constable, what are you doing here? And he was trying to say, you were here before uh, the Mormons were? Why did you let him in? But uh, no, the Mormons were here before the constables. This was Mexico territory when Brigham Young arrived in 1847. It was 1848 when the United States took over from Mexico as uh, Mexico ceded, ceded the territory to the United States. And so the United States didn't recognize Brigham Young and his kingdom of Deseret. And thus Brigham Young started a war against the United States because that's what they're all about. They're part of trying to overthrow America. And Brigham Young was trying to do his part with the Confederates beginning to build up in the South for the Civil War that eventually began and took over. But that's what Brigham Young was trying to do his part for. As Joseph Smith was running for president in the last year of his life, uh, Brigham Young had formed the, the um, Council of Fifty as a counter-government for when Joseph Smith, if he won by chance, so that he would have his secret government and assassinate Joseph Smith rather than Abraham Lincoln and uh, coup the government in that process. And so, yeah, the Danites of Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball are terrorist threats to America, just like the Confederates are. They're one and the same. They came from the same source origin as 1826 caused them to scatter and uh, infiltrate other organizations and groups. <coughs> and we know Brigham Young also was a part of it because the Nauvoo Temple, dedicated on the anniversary of the Illuminati, that terrorist group that was trying to destroy America, and still is, they're doing it today. And so, uh, yeah, the extermination order was technically for the Danites. It wasn't for the Mormons who were innocent, but uh, when you got the Danites forcing people to sign that it was Joseph Smith and uh, leading people to believe it was Joseph and his church, that's what the church is doing now. They're purposely being bad white supremacist, white religious nationalists, so that they can uh, give the church a bad name, give Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon a bad name as they call Joseph Smith a Christian and the Book of Mormon a Christian literature about Jesus. It's their whole intention is to look bad in front of the world so that the world blames Joseph and the Book of Mormon. Because the church just says, hey, we're just following Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. You're denying us our religious freedom. No. They're the ones that are frauding everybody in the world, leading people to believe the wrong thing. And so they're doing the exact same thing they were doing back then. And so technically the extermination order shouldn't have been lifted because the Danites are still running this church. And you get that Merrick Garland? I'm going to finish your investigation finally. I gave you a whole bunch more evidence from conference weekend. I should also tell you how Brigham Young rewarded Orrin Porter Rockwell for his faithfulness and loyalty. You familiar with the Point of the Mountain here in Utah? The hotel? Hotel? <laughs> It was the best little whore house in Utah. <laughs> yep, it was the first brothel here in the valley. <laughs>